snakes is the most tragic of the chimps we have in the forest. But when you think about it, uh, the pain or the capability that is caused by snares is, is the same for all chimps. But for Max, it's especially hard because he lost two of his, both his legs to snares. So what happens when the animal, let's say, is coming from the other direction, coming up, it will come, put the head, continue moving. As it moves, it puts its head in the wire. And as it continues moving, the wire holds the animal firmly in the neck. As it starts struggling, it will suffocate and die. Max's tragedy happened a few years ago, but we have other chimps getting snared every every year. Most people say animals don't have, don't feel pain. I don't believe that. Life is not easy for him in the forest. Sometimes he reaches the fruiting trees where the fellow chimps are only to find that food has been finished. That is uh, good uh, with Max. He has become a parent ever since Moon lost his mother. So since they are brothers and he is the elder brother, he's taking care of Moon. So I love him for that. The Chivale Forest National Park is beautiful and unpredictable with the highest concentration of primates in the world, which includes 13 different species. The park protects several well-studied, habituated communities of about 1,430 common chimpanzees, as well as several species of monkeys. The Chivale Chimpanzee Project, established 30 years ago by Dr. Richard Rangham, is a long-term study of how chimpanzees behave in the wild and interact with other creatures in their forest home. Dr. Emily Otali is the first African woman to earn a doctorate in primatology. The Chivale Chimpanzee Project started in 1987. Uh, it's a research organization. We mainly do research on chimpanzees following the behavior and life history of the chimpanzees of the Kanyawara community and any other thing that comes with doing research. Kanyawara researchers wake before dawn to find chimpanzees in their sleeping nests. Chimpanzees range over a large area, so it can sometimes take more than an hour to reach the nest site on foot. If the research team does not know where the chimpanzees slept the previous night, they listen for calls or visit trees containing fruits that chimpanzees enjoy. Uh, we collect data on the chimps, like their activity, their daily behavior. So we do focus scans from uh, the morning through the evening. Otherwise, we unnest the ch we p we unnest the chimps in the morning and then uh, follow them through the day till late evening when they make their nests again, and then we leave the nests and. We come back home. <laughs> 
Max is one of the shy individuals, and we don't see him very often because he prefers to stay near his mother in a remote part of the Kanyawara Range in Uganda's Chibale National Park. He lost his limbs not to war, disease, or a car accident, but to wire snares. This is unusual for an adolescent male because as Max is 17 years, as he grows up, he should spend more time with the adults, trying to integrate into the male dominance hierarchy. Max is the most tragic of the chimps we have in the forest, but when you think about it, uh, the pain or the capability that is caused by snares is, is the same for all chimps. But for Max, it's especially hard because he lost two of his both his legs to snares. He lost his first leg at the age of four years old, and um, it's almost okay and possible to survive with only one leg. But uh, at the age of seven, he lost the second one too. And the, the first few days of a snare injury are the hardest, the most painful. Most people say animals don't, have, don't feel pain. I don't believe that because you see the discomfort alone that the animal is going through and you know that he is in pain. So when he lost his second leg, um, he didn't move, he couldn't move, his mother had to carry him, and at seven years old, he's heavy, uh, the mother can't carry him all the time. And we thought he would starve to death. Um, and then one day we saw his mother without him, and I, I was relieved, I said, okay, he's dead, he's in a better place. And three months later, we saw him crawling around the forest. He's still alive, he's still in the forest, but what kind of life does he have? I don't think it's the normal life for a chimpanzee. At any one time, there are 15,000 active snares in Chibale National Park, according to researchers. That's nearly 20 snares for every square kilometer. However, since 1997, a group of dedicated, specialized rangers have put their own lives on the line to fight back against this flood of snare. The Kibale Snare Removal Program is um, a program where we've hired people to remove snares from the forest. It started in the early 90s, and this is because we had so many of our chimps getting injured from snares, which are upset for for different reasons, you know, for capturing small ungulates in the forest. But because chimps are ground dwelling, uh, they end up becoming victims of the snares. So we, it's very hard to watch the chimps with all these snare injuries and any other animals for that matter. Uh, but because the chimps are our study subjects, we, we interact with them a lot. And so it was necessary that we hired people to remove the snares from the forest. Not only do the snare team find and remove hundreds of snares, they also identify areas where illegal activities happen by carefully noting down the time and place of every snare they find. We are six members, the snare removal team. We work hand in hand with the law enforcement department of UWA, Uganda Red Death Authority. We go mainly to remove snares from the park. And uh, we collect other data. As we started the searching, we suspected some snares because we've taken some good time without patrolling this area. And now we found a snare. This is one type of a snare. It's a, a neck trap. It uh, grabs the animal by the neck. When it can, an animal can get trapped when it's moving from the other direction, coming up, or moving down. So what poachers do is they try to block all this area, leaving only this one as the only way for the animal to move. And the target animals here are the dikers. We have two types of dikers, the blue diker and the red diker. They are one of the angeles we have here in Chibali National Park. So, a, a snare is basically a loop. You can see the loop, how it is. 
this is a wire neck snare. Why do we call it a wire neck snare? Because of the material used. It's a wire. So, what happens, what they do, they tie the wire on a big pole which is stuck on the ground. So what happens when the animal, let's say it's coming from the other direction, coming up, it will come, put the head, continue moving, as it moves, it puts its head in the wire, and as it continue moving, the wire holds the animal firmly in the neck. As it starts struggling, it will suffocate and die. Most of the chimps had lost their feet, some had lost their, their arms, but as per now, when I came out, uh, this, uh, this was not there. The chimps were in good condition. However, rarely you could get some, a few of them with snares in the arms or foot. I'm very proud about it that if these rangers who are, at, are on the ground by now, to continue with the same hard work we had done, then we shall succeed. So who is setting the traps that cripple the chimps? When we come back, we'll visit the communities that surround the park who have a different view of chimpanzees. Wildlife conservation. We have a mixed feeling about this. When the authorities come and tell us to conserve the chimpanzees, but they also come and uh, eat my maize, I don't know what to do, I don't know. Removing snares alone is not going to be helpful uh, because uh, Max's tragedy happened a few years ago, but we have other chimps getting snared every, every year. But unlike wildlife rangers, the snare dispatchers move through the forest unarmed, making their job especially dangerous. Despite challenges such as heavy rains, falling trees and armed poachers. Elephants are always their biggest worry. The team has been chased and attacked by an elephant more than once during patrols. In 2000, a snare almost took Kana's hand. She disappeared from her chimp family eight years after being snared, and conservationists feared the worst. However, a few months later, she showed up in another chimp community 10 kilometers away. Despite her injury, Kana has become a mother. Kana's story is one of the happy ones, but this is not necessarily easy or the life they should live. Nectar first lost her left arm at age five and was then snared again on her right at age eight. Unable to walk or feed, Nectar's health began to deteriorate. Nectar then lost her mother and began to take care of her two-year-old brother, Pollen. Within a few months, both chimps disappeared and were never seen again. While some chimps survive, others don't, and the toll can ripple through the chimp community. The local community have mixed feelings about conservation in Chivale National Park. Few people understand and appreciate the work being done, and the majority have negative attitudes towards conservation. 
wildlife conservation. Mm, we have a mixed feeling about this. When the authorities come and tell us to conserve the chimpanzees, but they also come and uh, eat my maize, I don't know what to do, I don't know. That's why some of our members have started killing these animals to protect the livelihood of their families. We partner with the Kasisi Project, which is a US-based um, NGO that uh, mainly funds us. We work with 14 schools that are within five kilometers of the forest, just, you know, teaching the children basic hands-on conservation knowledge and any other health education. Anything from hand washing to taking them into the forest because when we started, some of these kids, even if they come from very close to the forest, had never been to the forest or to any national park to see the wildlife. So we do a lot of stuff with them, but mainly we are conservation, we teach them conservation education and hope to inspire them to become conservationists. A simple game teaches the kids what it's like for a chimp to walk without their limbs. Snare removals act as a band-aid, providing a quick fix to the problem without providing long-term treatment. Educational outreach, on the other hand, is the medication that can provide real solutions that change behavior. Encouraging these kids to care for the forest is critical to the long-term reduction of hunting. It was hard because the legs were broken off. And the life is not easy for him in the forest. Sometimes he reaches the fruiting trees where the fellow chimps are, only to find that food has been finished. They should teach these children who are growing up not to become poachers, because when you poach them, in the near future it will be very difficult for them to see them to go and study them, to do research on them, because they also need to do some research on this wildlife, which is still present in Kibale National Park. Not only in Kibale, in the entire Uganda, they should do that. You know, as a country, we are gifted by nature. That's part of the nature. So we have this wildlife heritage. We have all these chimps we're talking about and so on and so forth. So, because this is our natural heritage, so Ugandans need to come, you know, and appreciate these things. So bring out the children and they get to know this so that we do the conservation for posterity. And they, you also support us to conserve this work by visiting the parks. For a Ugandan or East African audience watching this show, my only message to you is uh, remember, it's your duty to yourself, your children and your children's children, and to also the wildlife, not just chimpanzees, but all the wildlife. It's your duty to protect them and conserve them for the future generation and for now. They have as much right as we do to a life, a good life. When, when I see Max, uh, and I think about the Kibale snare removal program, I think that we're not working hard enough because uh, Max's tragedy happened a few years ago, but we have other chimps getting snared every, every year. So how much manpower do we need to comb the forest and, and be rid of the snares? I don't know. And there's no way you're going to protect or conserve something that you do not know about. 
it's a lot cheaper for Ugandans or for East Africans to go to the national parks and view all the game and all the plants. Try, give yourself a treat, get to know these animals and plants, love them enough. You will learn to conserve them, you will learn to appreciate them.